What up, Fight House fans? It's me, Jason Sutcliffe, with Tristan Ketty. And we're back for episode 22. We got a good one. Grant Dawson's going to join us, talk about his super dominant performance at the Dana White Contender Series Week 6. Scooped himself up a contract. Mm -hmm. Really looking forward to that conversation. Gavin Tucker's going to be with us talking about talking about super dominant. Uh, his debut in Halifax was near flawless against Sam Cecilia. He beat the brakes off him. Um, he's getting ready to do it again on the 9th, so... We're going to talk to him, see how his prep's been, see how he's feeling about the fight. Should be a good conversation. Uh, Dulani Perry, he's going to visit us, talk about uh, his recent trip to Thailand, being called out by uh, Ray Rodriguez. We're going to bring that up and talk to him about that and see what he's got going on, uh, if anything's on the horizons for him. And we'll close out the show tonight with Darren Till. He's getting ready to uh, get at it, uh, fight night on the 2nd. Uh, can't wait for that fight, and we will be talking to him about how his training's going, what's been going on, you know, how how he's feeling heading into the fight. 14-0-1, what he wants next, one of the top prospects. So, well, you know, he's climbing the 170 ranks, so we're going to find out what he's up to. So stay with us. we got a great show. Talk to you soon. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Jason Herzog has called a stop to this bout at 1 minute 15 seconds in the second round, declaring your winner... By submission, Grant Dawson. What's up, Fight House fans? We're here with Grant Dawson, fresh off his UFC contract and his big win at uh, Dana White Contender Series Week 6. What's going on, Grant? Welcome <coughs> to the show, brother. Hey, thank you for having me, guys. 100%, man. Glad to have you. Um, how's everything going uh, after the fight? How you feeling? Honestly, this has been the best week of my life. Uh, everything is just working out great. Uh, I got a contract what I wanted, bought a new car. Everything's going great. I'm as happy as a bee. Sweet. What kind of car did you grab? I got a 08 Mercedes. Nice. I like it. That's yeah. how you're doing it. 23 years old riding yeah. a Mercedes. It's a good yes, life. Yes, sir. boy. Yes, sir. Um, you know, about, to the fight, though, how did you feel about the fight against Adrian Diaz, man? What did you feel about your performance? Uh... I thought it went exactly how I thought it would go. Um, you know, uh, Adrian's a tough dude. Uh, he, he's super tough, and he's really good. He's fought a lot of high-level guys. He's fought, I think, two or three UFC vets. So being able to go out there and have a performance like that just shows Dana White that I'm ready. I knew I was ready, but uh, it was about showing Dana that I was ready, and, and now he knows, and I just can't wait to keep, uh, keep impressing the bosses. Was there was there anything that happened during the fight that caught you off guard or surprised you or didn't or kind of went different than you thought it would? Yeah, yeah. Uh, he he tried to play jujitsu with me and and that don't work with me. Uh, he I, I thought he was going to try to get up, get up, get up. Uh, in his fights before, as soon as he gets taken down, he tries to get up and and he I think as soon as he got to, uh, taken down, he knew like he wasn't getting up from under me. Not many people can so. Uh, he was trying to play the jiu-jitsu game, which was great by me. So that was really the only, only thing I, that really surprised me. Um, how confident were you after the fight ended in, in feeling like you were going to walk away with the contract? Uh, at first, I, I got up and I was like, ah, I wonder if that was enough, you know, because you always, you always kind of wonder, doubt, you know, whatever. But I looked over and I saw Dana. He was standing and clapping and he said, man, you're a beast. And I was like, I was like, boom, give me that contract. Give me that contract. That's right. That's right. And what was the feeling like when when you finally did when he when he called your name and you were sitting back there with the guys? What was the feeling for you when your name was called? Uh, good. It, it was great. Obviously, the the dream has been been to be in the UFC, but uh, I, I keep telling everybody asks me that. You know, like yeah. eh, the dream is to be a UFC world champion. So being in the UFC is just a given. I'm supposed to be here. This is how it was supposed to go. I need to put wins together now to get that title. That's the goal. Um, you know, before this, you you had a, an offer to to go to Nebraska. You turned that down to follow this dream. Was that a hard thing to do at the time? And, and what did your family think about you making that move? Uh, no, it wasn't. Um, I love wrestling, but uh, I don't want to be the best wrestler in the world. I want to be the best MMA fighter in the world. So, um, it, I mean, it would be... It, <sighs> School, I don't I don't need school. I don't need school right now. School in, in high school wasn't a big thing for me. I didn't like it. I didn't, you know, I struggled really hard. So it just didn't make sense for me to go to college 
and do that. Uh, I knew what I wanted to do. A lot of people go to college because they don't know what they want to do. I knew what I wanted to do at a young age. And so I'm, I'm chasing it. I'm going after it. I don't need to waste time partying in college. I don't need to waste time getting a degree or doing any of that. And I'm not saying that that's bad. I'm just saying it's not for me and not what I want to do. Absolutely. Um, you know, I seen earlier that you had called out Dennis Seaver. So, you know, you hit the roster and, and, and you call the name. Um, why Dennis? What, what made you select that, that name? Well, he's the worst fighter in the UFC. So, uh, <laughs> it, it's just, I'll, how many wins does he have at 45? How many wins does he have at 45? I'll, I'll wait. You tell me. I'll wait. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, but man, uh, I'm not afraid. People... People are so afraid to say what they want. People are so afraid. Uh, the moment I got in the UFC, I said, I'm, I'm here to win a title. I'm here to win a world title. I haven't even fought in the UFC yet. And I'm saying I'm here to win a world title. And people are afraid to say that. They're afraid to say uh, what they want because they're afraid that, you know, if they lose or if they don't do well, they're going to get criticized more. You know what I mean? I don't care. I, I could care less what people think. I could care less. Uh, about all that or what people say, I am here to win a world title. And to do that, I need to fight people. You know, I need to fight people. I need to fight people out there. And they asked who I wanted to fight. And when, when you ask me who I want to fight, I will give you a name. I'll never say uh, whoever the UFC wants. I hate that. I'll never say that. I will give you a name if you ask me who I want to fight. And I would love to fight Dennis Seaver. So why not? Can we expect you in like inside the octagon after a win to have a name every time? Is that what you're saying? Like if, if the mic's there, you're gonna have Correct. a name. Sweet. Correct. Do you, do you have a like a a list? Do you have a, a kind of a path yes. you you have in your head that you want to take? Yes. I like it. You're not gonna share that with us, are you? I'll share. It. Yeah. So, well, I don't care. I'll so, share. It. So what's that list look like if you're looking at your path to a title and what's it looking like in your head? So I would, if I could pick my own fights, which I can't, but if I could, yeah, yeah. I would fight Dennis Seaver, Alex White, uh, Gray Maynard. I really want to fight Gray Maynard, and and that's, I want to fight Gray Maynard a, as a fan because I, when I was a kid, he was one of my favorite fighters, and so Great I want to fight him be, a, as a, you know, your idols become your rivals type situation. Sure. I want to fight him. That'd be great. Uh, and then so that'd be three. Bigger names, I mean, bigger names, and then somebody uh, ranked, Miles Jury, and then just keep going up from there, you know? Uh, I mean, I could go on and on and on. Yeah. Um, so what kind of timeline do you give yourself to be a champion? You're 23, you got your contract, you, you clearly got a ton of time ahead of you uh, in the sport. So what's the timetable like for you? Uh, you never know. I mean, in a perfect world, uh I, I'm, I think Frankie Edgar is supposed to be fighting Max Holloway next. In a mm -hmm. perfect world, Frankie gets hurt, and I'm on the same card, and they ask me to fight him the next day, Joe Soto style. Uh, I, I'm not afraid of anybody. I, I'm here to win a world title. I keep saying that. I'm here to win a world title, so when they offer it to me, I will say yes. Whether I'm hurt, sick, tired, underpaid, undermotivated, I'm tough enough to beat these guys. I'll be ready. Sweet. So let me ask you, man. Um, what, what do you think about uh, May Mac? What's your prediction there, man, for for the McGregor Mayweather? You gonna watch it? Yeah, well, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I got McGregor. Yeah. How do you think he wins? Um, and why do you say that? Knockout. Uh, I say knockout. Okay, man. Here's the thing, and I could be wrong. I, sure. I, I'm gonna publicly say, or I'm sorry, McGregor though. Uh, I don't know. I'm done counting him out. I, I counted him out against Diaz. I counted him out against Mendez. I counted him out against uh, Aldo. I counted him out against uh, Alvarez. I, I just keep counting him out, and he keeps winning. So his confidence is on. A, the thing about him is he's intelligent. He is an intelligent fighter, and so he's not going to go in there unprepared. He's not going to go in there uh, not knowing what he's doing. Um, and I think Mayweather's not taking him seriously. You know, I think Mayweather's underestimating him, which he has good reason to. But uh, McGregor's bigger, a southpaw, younger, and hits harder. And it's eight-ounce gloves. Uh, it, it, if he's going to do it, he's going to do it now. Sweet. So you got a, you got a round prediction? Uh, I'm going to say second. Sweet. Second round knockout. Sweet. Uh, how soon would you like to get yourself back into the octagon before I let you go? Uh, I, I, Tomorrow. I'd like to get in tomorrow. I want to fight ASAP, but uh, they, I, I'm shooting for November. November? December at the absolute latest. Sweet. 
Listen, uh, Grant, man, I, want, I really want to thank you for coming on and, and giving us some of your time. I really appreciate it. I really look forward to your debut. And uh, thanks a lot for the time, brother. Thanks for having me on, guys. 100%, man. Have a good one. You too, buddy. All right, take care. You too. All right. He, what what uh, surprised me about him was, because he's, a, he's a, clearly a beast. Everybody saw that. But uh, he has that rare quality where it, a lot of guys that we call don't seem to, or talk with, rather, don't seem to have like a really good knowledge of, of the entire game as far as individual fighters. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? He clearly he has a good grasp of the entire roster of the UFC, which I mean, a lot of fighters don't see any value in that. But at the end of the day, if you can carve, like he said, if you can carve his path exactly as he, he sees it, I feel like that's what that's, that's one of the many uh, strengths that like he said that McGregor has. It's like his intelligence. Yeah, you know I mean? so that's it's a it's a huge bonus. You know, I. I feel like there's some people come in and it's like they're just glad to be there and then other people have like, no, this, like he said, yeah. like, no, this is where I'm supposed to be. There's nothing to celebrate. And it's like that feeling of, like, they've already looked at all of this. Like, they've already had been there in their own mind, you know, and it's like they, they know, the like you said, they know yeah. the roster. They know the the route they want to take. Who's a good fight for them? Yeah. You know, they've already looked at all this stuff. They Just getting there was just, it was never really like something to celebrate, you know. It's, yeah, like, uh, he, he's it's vi- like he's he's visualized just beating the shit yeah. out of Ray Maynard. <laughs> yeah, it's really true. Yeah, but yeah, so you know, I thought you were gonna th- when he, when he, when he started talking about uh, Dennis Seaver wins, I thought you were gonna defend your boy BJ. I couldn't. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't. But you know, it, I just couldn't. You know. Anyways, it was a really great, uh, really great conversation with uh, Grant Dawson. Definitely one of the top prospects coming up. Super dominant performance. Um, speaking of prospects coming up and dominant performances, uh, we have Gavin Tucker coming up. He he made his debut in Halifax and put an absolute beating on Sam Cecilia. And uh, he's getting ma- ready to make his return on the ninth. So we're going to bring him in. We're going to talk about that. And uh, stay with us. It's going to be a good conversation. Talk to you guys soon. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds, we go to the judges' scorecards. All three have it scored the same, 30 to 27 for your winner by unanimous decision. And still undefeated, Halifax's own governor, Gavin Tucker! There's his girlfriend in tears. What's up, Fight House fans? We're back with Gavin Tucker, who's getting ready to take on Rick Glenn coming up at uh, September 2nd, correct? September 9th. 9th. Sorry, the two cards are so close. I apologize for that, the 9th. No um, <laughs> how's everything going, man? How's preparation and everything? Yeah, it's going uh, It's going really well. You know, um, had a lot of time for this one to prepare compared to the last one, of yeah. course, so it was just a month's notice. So this one has been great. Had some, some training trips and... Uh, good advice from uh, from from really good really educated coaches and the, the plan is set I'm kind of in the trenches right now of getting everything ready and the weight off and stuff but it's going to be a different uh, a different looking fight from the last one definitely man what are the nerves how are the nerves different for this one with with so much more time to prepare and kind of think about it and when the last one was kind of a rush for you yeah, there's no, there's no nerves. There's only work, you know. Right now, you can't, you can't let nerves take precedent. I mean, there's going to be preparation, and no matter what, so it's not really much point to let that in. I'm sure there will be moments in the lead up, especially fight week once we land in Edmonton, that uh, kind of goes through that. But it's as business as usual for me, man. This is what I signed up for. This is what I, I love doing. So, no such thing as nerves. If some nerves or doubt creep in, I just replace it with work. Man, how excited are you to fight outside of the East Coast? Because uh, I think all your fights, but one, have been in Halifax. You fought one in Nova Scotia, or New Brunswick, mm-hmm. I think it was. New, New Brunswick, I think? Uh, I, yeah, I fought in uh, Pictou County once, and I fought in New Brunswick uh, once as yeah. well, yeah. Yeah, so what's it going to be like to kind of step out of that a little bit? Are you excited for that? Yeah, I mean, I think the arena is going to be very welcoming for me. Um, a large part of the population in Alberta are Newfoundlanders, is my, where, where I'm from, is my hometown. And the other half are Canadians, and we're fighting the Americans. So I think it's going to be welcoming and warm, just as it was here in Halifax. This is my adopted city, not my home city, but my home is in Newfoundland, and yeah. uh, half the island is coming up as well. So you can expect the room to be uh, to be on my side. And, 
Um, I don't think it's going to be too much different. I mean, I fought guys from away, but it's never been my arena. It's never been my cage, so uh, I never look at it as home and this and that. It's just another. It's just. It's just my my eleventh uh, pro fight. That's what it is. You know, when you were getting ready to, to for the Cecilia fight, and everything was kind of pushed on you there at the last minute. It was rushed. What was it mm. like when you came out, man? To all those fans, everyone's cheering for you. Like you, you definitely had the room that day. Uh, what was yeah. that like for you to make your debut under those kind of uh, circumstances? It was definitely it was definitely nice, you know, something that I definitely appreciated, but I didn't really take in until after the fact. You know, you can't you can't really focus on that until the actual fight is over. And like I said, those kind of things I don't put too much emphasis on because there's definitely going to be times when that's not going to be in my favor. So the more I can put it out of my mind and not have it a factor when it's uh, what well, you might call an advantage for me, it's going to work the same way when uh, when I'm the villain or the or the visitor, so to speak. And like I said, it all comes down to the work. It's not going to matter who who has the hometown crowd. It's just uh, it's just it comes down to the fight and the fighters. You know, you, you really burst on the scene, man. I I, I remember watching the fight. You for, I hadn't seen you before your, your last fight, and it was mm -hmm. like a near flawless performance. Like I think you got hit with like ten percent of your shots. You were moving real well. You even got really comfortable in there and started showboating a little bit, started putting a mm -hmm. little smack talk. Is that something we can expect to see from you in the cage? Is that sort of attitude, uh, that sort of uh, energy? Um, I think every fight is going to bring different energy, you know. Um, this one's not going to look anything like that. I don't expect it to look like that at all. The, the whole fight, the whole... I feel like a different person from fight to fight, you know, and different different style. I have more to bring than just, just that one style. And then I'm... I think like a lot of people are going to be anticipating seeing a specific type of fight, but uh, I'm under no obligation to have any particular style. You know, I'm going to tailor my training and preparation to whatever version of any fighter is going to beat my opponent's uh, version. So, if I have to get out there and you know clinch for three rounds, or if I have to get out there and wrestle for three rounds, or play off my back looking for submissions for three rounds, or just pure box, whatever is going to be, I, I'll spend a lot of time with just pure specialists in each sport and I spent a lot of time in places like uh, Montreal with TriStar and Crash Titans and places where I've, uh, I think I've put together a good game plan for whatever version of Rickland shows up so I'm kind of hoping that everything uh, works out as I have it in my head and um, people will appreciate the next performance even more than the first. I'm I'm here to get finishes. I want to finish fights. I'm not I'm not going out there to dance and move and uh, whatever goes on behind the scenes is is whatever. It was a good performance. The people people liked it and, and it's not uh, from what I get from feedback. But it's not it's not the best that uh, is going to come from me. You know this this next fight we're we're getting a finish one way or the other. People are going to get their money's worth out of me. Sweet, you know. Um Speaking of that opponent, Rick Glenn, what do you know about him as an opponent, and how do you feel like you match up with him stylistically? Yeah, he's he's a he's a rare type of opponent that you're going to get. I mean, he's six foot tall and southpaw, so it's like um, you know something you don't usually see at 145 is that kind of height. And obviously, dealing with a southpaw is a, is a lot different. You don't want to be uh, you don't want to be uh, leaning into you know he's got a he's got some dangerous stuff off the left side. Um, he's uh, he's definitely uh, grindy. Comes to comes to fight, loves to fight. Very durable. You know, he's decent off his back. Uh, decent uh, decent pressure and decent power. It's, it's going to be a really exciting matchup. You know what I mean? It's the kind of fights uh, that I want. These uh, these are tough guys from the WSOF champ. Fought some really high caliber guys uh, uh, even before the UFC. So it's going to be uh, it's going to be a good scrap. I'm I'm hoping to get in there and uh, and see. Uh, the best version of him so that I can bring out the best version of me. You know, I know you do um, extensive research. They were saying during uh, during your last fight that apparently uh, you're very um, focused on on the fighter at hand. You do a lot of research, a lot of studying, a lot of tape mm -hmm. and that kind of stuff, almost to the point of overtraining. They were saying during your fight, your coach has got to kind of slow you down. Mm -hmm. um, what do you, When you watch his tape, what do you feel like are some of the things you're going you're gonna to have to do really well in order to walk away with the W? Like, where do you feel you're going to have to excel in that fight? Mm -hmm. There's there's going to be, um, well, without getting too specific and, yeah. and giving stuff away, there's definitely going to have to be, um, you're going to have to be able to give ground properly. You know, he's the kind of guy who likes to push forward. He cuts off the cage really well, uh, always hides that center dot from you. So the movement is going to be 
uh, a little bit different from the last fight where you've got a the last fight was a big right hand banger um, slinging more hooks um, Glenn throws hooks and overhands as well but some stuff is down the pipe a little more and uh, obviously you don't want to drift out to that side into the left hand too much and um, you know you're gonna have to deal with being able to fight backwards a little bit um, uh, or put him on the back foot a little bit but it really depends on what version shows up. He could come and really try and grind and wrestle, and I'm kind of expecting uh, expecting a lot of um, him trying to do different stuff as well. So if it, if it turns into a match, we have to grind it out and, and uh, fight from clinch and keep it moving. That's that's uh, definitely in my preparation. You know, that's something that we're going to have to uh, address, and we'll see what it looks like when we get in there. But um, there's there's really specific ways to deal with that type of fighter, with that length, with that reach, and uh, and my speed is going to be a big factor. My speed and my feet, you know. Um, so it's not exactly always an advantage to have the reach if you don't have the advantage in the speed, or if you don't have the advantage in certain technical aspects of the striking, or certain specific technical aspects of the wrestling. Um, you know, you just can't let guys like that uh, pin you um, against the wall or pin you too close. So being really aware of real estate and how to control that real estate is going to be real important. And, and that's going to be the theme of this fight is really controlling the real estate uh, while at the same time negating the strengths uh, on the feet. You know, you created a lot of buzz with your first fight. Like I said earlier, it was a, it was a near falls performance, a great performance. Um, at 31 years old and you, and you kind of just stepped into the UFC now, do you feel rushed at all to make your way to that title? Do you feel like uh, you have to kind of step on the gas a little bit? No, not at all. I mean, for me, it's the opposite. I feel like um, I feel very healthy, very, very, uh, very good, very physical, and it's, it just keeps getting better. So for me, I like the long stretch that I had between fights to upgrade, uh, you know, my wrestling and, and upgrade my boxing, travel to Thailand, um, all that stuff, the time in between, and it helps you grow as a fighter too, you know, and I'm, all, I'm already there. This is my 11th fight, so I don't get a chance to cut my teeth by being in there and having these experiences. I have to get it in the gym and stuff like that, so I'm putting in uh, time and sparring sessions that, that look like fights or look like wrestling matches, and, um, you know, these, these kind of uh, experiences are going to go a long way, and for me, I think the average age of fighters is definitely seeming to be going up and it's not all about crash and bang and being young so you can sustain a lot of damage or you know your durability has to be up the the, the game is changing a lot and um, the technicians are starting to rise up and you see it in in little ways someone has something kind of really refined as far as a technique or a strike goes that no one else seems to have and um you see guys coming in, this new footlock game is coming through with jiu-jitsu. The style of wrestling is changing a lot. You get guys who, you know, aren't catching up to obviously like Division One guys, but defensively, the defensive wrestling is definitely coming up. And in the cage with the wall wrestling, things are a lot more educated. So I don't feel any rush to put uh, put my foot on the gas. Like you said, I'm, I'm, I'm going through this... Uh, these phases as a martial artist and picking up things as I go and I'm hoping that I can continue to study and apply them correctly so uh, the time between that helps me study and then the, the fights coming up is the goal and the date that helps me apply it and I look forward to that man this is a lot of this is a lot of this is a dream for me you know and now I'm now I'm in the show with the opportunity to do that and make money doing it and then continue to uh, travel and train with the money that comes in and gives me more resources so the more time I have between the more I grow and, uh, you know, the in two and a half years, even if I fought every six months and I'm five fights deep, hopefully with no uh, no losses and in contention. And uh, I'll be, you know, mid 30s approaching my prime as a as a man uh, physically. And that's a, that seems like a perfect time, perfect way to grow and a perfect situation for me. Definitely. Um, how do you how do you see this fight ending with Glenn? If you had to predict it, how do you how do you see it ending? Mm, he's a very durable guy. So it's going to be. Uh, it's going to be, um, you know, uh, either a very uh, fast start into uh, some really, um, yeah, I, I, like I said, I don't want to give too much yeah, away, but sure. if, my, if my skills can't get it done, and I say this a lot, but if my skills don't fix this fight, I'm going out in a fire show, you know, I'm going to give people their money's worth and, uh, and then... We're gonna we're gonna have that battle of attrition, and we're gonna see what that durability looks like. I'm not gonna get lured into brawling too much. Of course, it's not never the smartest thing. It's like flipping a coin, but um, 
I'm coming. I'm coming to fight. So I'm looking for the finish for this fight. And I'm hoping to see it before the end. Of the, uh, before the end of the third round. You know, do you have any names on on your on your on your tongue, man, on your mind, uh, for what you want after this fight? Do you have a path kind of carved out for yourself mentally of what you'd like? Yeah. So the way the way we have it done out, and not to get too too in depth with it, but I have groups of of the next one. So the first tier, obviously, I don't have much choice in my entry. Um, this one, they sent us the name, and and it is what it is. I'm not saying no to any fights, but I definitely have ways I'd like to see it go. Roots, I'd like to see it go. Uh, also, different stylistic uh, opponents, because um, every different style is a good opportunity to grow in a different different way. So the preparation um, for each different opponent will be specific. But I definitely have some some names. I don't want to be disrespectful in any way and call anyone out. But there's definitely some. Uh, some fighters that I'm I'm interested in fighting, but at the end of the day, it's it's all of them, you know. Whoever whoever Sean Shelby says uh, is next, and that's who's next. I'm not going to be picky and choosy. I'll have a I'll, I'll show up with a a plan, and I'll show up with a big set of loans, and uh, and we'll get it done. You know, one last question before I let you go, man. I have to ask you, May Mac, you're going to be watching it, and what's your prediction, man? If you are, um. I'm not sure if I'm going to watch. It depends. I'm kind of in the trenches for my own preparation, right. so that kind of takes precedent. But um, mm -hmm. predictions, yeah, I would guess um, Mayweather by decision. Uh, in the end, yeah, I think he'd probably just eventually shut it down and, and be a little song and dance and fairly anticlimactic. But you never know. You never know what could happen. Maybe they could stop him as well. And uh, he, Yeah, uh, I don't know. It's hard to say. I haven't really put any attention and time into it. It's, it's such a Right, everyone's talking about it, but uh, I'm kind of enclosed in my own little bubble. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, listen, Gavin, man, I really wanted to uh, thank you for giving us some of your time. I really wish you the best of luck in the upcoming fight, and uh, yeah, man, all the best. Thanks a million, man. Appreciate the time. All right, man, sweet. Hopefully we can get you back on the show after the fight, man, talk about the big win. Anytime. Thank you. All right. I touched it a second too early. It's okay. We still need to talk, Jason. <laughs> you know what man i he reminded me so much of cody garbrandt when i watched him against yeah. sam cecilia the move just so everything kind of was was Before weird we came on here and i wasn't sure if i'd seen the fight i was like God, i felt bad because you know, normally i like to make sure that i, I you know, do research even though i just produce a show and stuff but still i like to know yeah and uh and then as soon as i saw his face like oh never mind i remember that fight yeah, like, yeah. immediately uh he's just a, so it was a barn burner yeah, he was he was so good in that yeah, fight. Yeah, man. the crowd was going nuts for him. I remember. I remember. Yeah, that. yeah, definitely. Um, so listen, we're gonna be back, and we're gonna have uh, Dulani Perry. Let's stick with us. We're gonna be right back. Talk to you in a minute. What up, Fight House fans? We're back with Dulani Perry, the undefeated, self-proclaimed fight god. What's going on, Dulani? Welcome to the show, sir. Nothing much, man. I'm out here. Just came to Vegas. Came to watch this. Uh Floyd Mayweather versus Conor McGregor fight this weekend. Also, IBJJF World uh, Jiu-Jitsu tournament going down this weekend. So I'm here to support my teammates, and I'm just hanging out and having a good time. I'm going to do some training. I'm also going to go. Uh, I'm also going to look for me an apartment out here or something. See if I can live out here, get a little closer to the politics in the MMA world. Because I'm tired of you people playing with me in Houston. I need to be. I need to be where everything's at. Give me a step closer to the UFC. Nice. So, what, you're going to plan on making a move out to Vegas? Is that what you're planning? That's it's in, it's in my mind. I just got to see how living situations can go out here. Fair enough. Keep it in consideration. Nothing's final yet, but like, that's that's in my mind. Nice, right. nice. Uh, wh where are you going to put in your time out there if you if you move out there? You got any Probably gyms in mind? Syndicate, Syndicate MMA. I trained with them a few times. They're really good. And uh, they're a solid team. I love them, man. I, I like them. I like them a lot. Man. So does that mean you'll be parting ways with Paradigm? No, 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 no. Paradigm for life. Okay, okay, I, okay. I, I travel all the time. So it's, it's, yeah. not, it's never nothing for me to travel. Yeah, yeah. Go back to Paradigm. You know, Paradigm is, for me, I think they have the best jujitsu program in, in maybe the world besides Henzo Gracie Academy, which I also trained at before. I think these are the two best places at Paradigm when you train. train. At minimum, there's always three black belt world champions on the mat. So that, that's that's an experience you can't really change for anything. Syndicate MMA, they're a good MMA gym, but they don't have that. So I would still have to go to Paradigm and get that experience. And, you know, Paradigm got the wrestling. You know, the wrestling is that's probably the thing I'm missing the most because I'm very good at jiu-jitsu and I'm very good at stand-up. But 
my wrestling is not the best. As you've seen, David Acosta only caught me in that mount because I attempted to take down, but I'm not a wrestler. I was just playing around. I, I, I figured I had to fight one, so I was taking some chances. But yes, yeah, so I'm, I'm working on improving my wrestling. I'm not, I'm not afraid to take chances. Do you work on it? I'm gonna I'm I'm shoot more. All right, all right. I'll constant improving, constantly yeah. improving. I yes. hear you, man. So listen, before we take off from this Vegas thing, we start to talk about some other things you've been up to, other parts of the world you've been traveling. What do you, who you got for Maymac, man? What's the decision? What, what what are you looking at? I say Mayweather put him out before before the fifth round. Man. Yeah. Yeah, man. It's a it's a different sport, you know. I'm, I'm, I'm me, for instance. You know, sometimes the best way to answer a question is to to use your own experience. You know. So me, when I'm boxing with MMA guys and MMA gyms and I'm and I'm killing them, it seems easy. Like, oh, I'm a good boxer, but then I remember times that I went to boxing gyms and I tried to box the boxing guy, <laughs> and they'll humble you. They'll humble you very, very fast, you know. So uh, I I watched the interview the other day and it said, the guy said, "What's what's the black guy that's on ESPN?" Um, Stephen A. Smith. Stephen A. Smith. Yeah, him. He, he's talking to Mayweather inside the ring at his gym, and you know he's like a. Uh, Right now, he's like right now as we're speaking. He said, he said, he said, uh, what did he say? He said right now as we're speaking. He said Mayweather is training, you know. And he said also while we're speaking, Conor McGregor is just learning how to box. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying. You take a guy that's 20 years, he's been training nothing but his hands, nothing but punching, nothing but boxing. You know, you got Conor McGregor. He hasn't even been training MMA 20 years, you know, let alone the boxing aspect. Like, how, how are you going to catch up to this guy? It's highly impossible, man. This guy's arms is, is the train. He's bobbing and weaving as good. He's the best defensive fighter. How are you going to hit him? I know you want to knock out. I'm not saying it's impos- impossible. Anything can happen. We all know fighting anything possible. Sure. But the chances of him hitting Mayweather and knocking him out, the best boxers in the world couldn't do it. How are you going to come from somewhere else and think you're going to do it? Mayweather's going to punch at a high volume. You know, they say he hasn't knocked anybody out, but he hasn't knocked any of any boxes out. Yeah. You know, when, you, when you're doing MMA, you're throwing two, three punches at a time. One, two, punch, kick. Two punches, kick. One, shoot. You know? Yeah, Boxing yeah. is different. Mayweather's going to be throwing high volume, 10, 15 punches at a time. While weaving, coming back in, punch, 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 punch. They'll be flying at him. He's not used to this pace. And the, 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 the other guy that he sparred with, he's trying to say he beat that guy. That guy means nothing. The guy's 40 years old. He hasn't been training in a long time. Yeah, yeah. Paulie? Washed up. Yeah, you can't, yeah, you can't compare him to Mayweather, man. Mayweather's the greatest in the sport, man. Yeah, no, it's true. It's true. It's very true. Um, speaking but of I legends. Love McGregor. I, love, I love McGregor, though. Well, yeah, but how could you, you know, self-made, man. Yeah. How could you not, you know? Yeah, but this is not going to be his night. But it will be because he's going to get the yeah. money. Hey, but you know it's not going to be as nice. <laughs> yeah, but it's a hundred million dollar night, though. That's a good night. Yeah. You know what? He's going to be happy. It, he's going to be as two big black guys. He's going to be the happy. Yeah, <laughs> listen, man. I, we've all had our ass kicked for free. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Give my ass kicked for a hundred million. Sign me up. Like I'm in. Yeah. You know. Um, speaking of legends, though, man, you you also been recently over in Thailand. I seen you uh, putting in a little bit of light sparring with Sen Senche. Uh, what was that like for you? Amazing experience, man. Amazing experience. A good guy. He got a lot of tricks, but honestly, he teaches me. He was showing me a lot of tricks that I already, I already had in my arsenal. You know, so I, I've been doing this for a long time, so he's not really showing any me anything that I don't know already. But in areas, he critiques certain things. You know, mm-hmm. he's, he's very good at. I tell you what, he's really good at. He's good, he's good at catching kicks and sweeping. That's his thing. You know, I fight, I'm a long guy. I usually fight guys shorter than me, so my skill is to fight from the outside. You know, he's a shorter guy, so he has that inside fight. He, he knows how to put people on their back. He's good at sweeping, so I, I, I picked up some things from there that I can probably use in my game, but I don't really want to fight that up close and personal because I'm not here to take damage. You know, I'm like, I consider myself the Mayweather enemy. Man. I'm a defensive fighter. I'm trying to give the hits, and I'm never trying to get hit. If you watch my fight, you never see me black eyes. And all. That's not me. I'm not here for that. I'm trying to get this career going as long as I can and leave and be healthy. I'm not trying to be like Muhammad Ali. You know, Muhammad Ali had a great career, but look at him, man. The guy couldn't, before he passed, he couldn't think. Like, 
know what I'm saying? It's hard, man. We don't, I don't want to live like that. No, no, definitely not. Definitely not. Um, That's good. The biggest thing with those guys there are, they're hungry. You know, they, they train harder. So the technique is the same, but they're training at a pace that's ridiculous. I mean, these guys, they don't get tired. They're punching and kicking fast and hard. And, you know, they're, they're, put, they're putting it in at a, at, a, at a much harder pace. So they're, they're tougher than us is what I would say. But technically, everything's the same. We all know the same moves. Fair you know, enough. Get your mind where they're at, man. They're tough, man. <laughs> Yeah, well, but it's it, an environment it over there, right? It's a different... Next fight, my next fight, I'm going to train them. Hungry like those guys. Fair I pick enough. up things fast. I'm not the guy to just look at it and say, oh, well, that's them, not, not me. Now, nah, fuck that. I'm going to train just as hard as those guys because I don't put them on no pedestal above me. It's just that I've never seen this pace before. Now that I've seen it, it's time to take it there. Let's take it there. Fair enough. You know, uh, what, what other video I happened to catch on your social media, man? You're over there playing with Tigers. What's wrong with you, man? You're a city guy, man. You're coming to Concord. You don't play with tigers, man. <laughs> You're not supposed to do that stuff, man. I would never do this. You know, I've seen people. I've seen people uh, do it in the past. People yeah. That went to Thailand. I have. Uh, I had two friends. They're girls. They went. They went to uh, Thailand. And they took pictures with tigers, and I said, "Oh, that's so cool, whatever." And they said, "Yeah, it's cool. The tigers are drugged up. Not a problem. It's just a cool picture." So, you know, me and my mom go to Thailand. So I'm like, all right, cool, let's go. I want to take pictures with the drugged up tiger. Yeah. That's the thing. The drugged up tiger. <laughs> I don't think I was as fortunate as these girls, you know. So we went to the place, and uh, the video doesn't even show you everything that's going on. Me and my mom go into the place. We buy the ticket. They say, you want to little tiger's big tiger. One experience. A tiger's a tiger. A little one can kill me just like the big one can kill me. I might as well get killed by the big one. The big one probably killed me a lot faster than the small one. Sure, yeah. <laughs> I feel a lot of pain, so let's go. <laughs> let's go with the big tiger. <laughs> so, we, so we buy the tickets, we go in there, and uh, we walk into this cage, right? We walk into the cage, there's five tigers, right? Nice. But we're going to take a picture with one. We're going to take a picture with one tiger. So I walk in there with two guys. There's only two guys. And like one older guy and there's one kid. Young kid, he couldn't. These guys can't do nothing with a stick. They don't have any guns. You know. They have nothing to put these tigers out. The tigers wanted to attack. We would have been shit out of luck. So we get in there, and the first thing that happens when we get in there, as two tigers, they run towards each other, and they leap high in the sky. Like, so high, you don't even understand how high, high, how high tigers jump. They jump like over our head, and they like jump into each other, hit their paws. And me and my mother getting scared. What's going on? And the guy's laughing and says, oh, they play like that sometimes. <laughs> not around me, they don't feel like that. <laughs> to me, that's not playing. That's, that's serious stuff, you know? So, you know how and that happened. And then we walk to the tiger. We're going to take the tiger with the picture with the, picture with the tiger. But there's, there's four other loose tigers that you don't even get to see in the video. And nobody's, nobody's guarding these tigers. These tigers are loose in the cage. The best thing they're telling us is, don't make eye contact with the tiger. <laughs> <laughs> so as I go to take the picture with the tiger and the tiger turn, I'm not trying to make eye contact with the tiger, but the tiger turns around towards me. Yeah, I see that. And I bro, 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 bro. <laughs> yeah, you know, like I, I, I said to my wife, I was like, I can't understand why Dulani just didn't explain to this tiger that he's the fight god. <laughs> and, that he, and that he needs to keep himself in check. I'm the fight guy. He's the bike guy. <laughs> that's it. That's it. That's it. So as far as MMA goes down, man, what's up next for you? Where are we at when we get to see you back in the cage? I don't know. Two weeks. Well, two weeks after my fight, they tried to offer me a title fight with Steven Peterson, main event, you know, uh, in Dallas. So uh, you know, I've been, I've been, I've been going to him, head, you know, just because he, he, he was the main guy, but. He's doing his thing, man. He got that UFC shot. I probably should have took the fight. I didn't want to take the fight because I was already drinking and stuff. You know, the day after my fight, I was gone. I was in Miami. I yeah, was, yeah. I was right after the fight. I know I'm not going to take no damage. I go. To, I, I got the vacation set up. I go. Yeah. I'm in Miami drinking and stuff, and I'm, I'm ready fat. I'm eating all kinds of feeding my stomach more food than it can handle. My stomach. I look pregnant almost, <laughs> you know? And I get the message from uh, Kyle and Cantrell talking about, he wanted the uh he wanted me to fight Steven Peterson. So when I declined, I said I can't do this. I'm 
I'm already out of shape. You know, I lose a lot of weight. I lose 25 pounds. Every fight is not easy for me. I'm already a lean guy. So when I declined it, he said, uh, I got one better for you. We'll do it. We'll do it. a title shot. Main event. Nice. And I'm like, I'm like, damn. I'm like, I, I like the way it sounds, but unfortunately, it's like it's unrealistic. Like, you know, yeah. it takes me at, at minimum six weeks to make my weight. Minimum. I already gained all my weight back. He's trying to tell me two weeks. Yeah. I'm like, there's no way to take that. But yeah, I couldn't take that. Now he's on UFC contender. So I'm like, I'm mad because I know I would have beat him up. And then shit, they would have had to take me. You know, he, he ain't got nothing. Fair he's probably not. I don't want to jinx the guy. He's probably not going to make it. He's not even good. The guy's not even good. You know, there's animals out here. I'm being realistic. I'm not hating on him. But I'm telling you, I know what's out here. There's some real animals out here. He's not the animal. You know, he might be good in Texas or whatever, but there's some animals out here. Well, he actually yeah. he he actually lost the decision yesterday night on the Contender Series. Oh, all right. See, well, see what I'm saying? Yeah, I see. didn't even see it. I'm telling. I know what's gonna Crazy happen. Crazy fight, though. Crazy fight. How did it, be, how did it go? How, how did you, what did you think of it? It was a dog fight, man. The guy. Uh, in, in fairness, like you know, um, I had him winning the fight. To be honest with you, two yeah. one. Um, but it was really close. It was like a su- it was a super close fight. But I had him personally winning two one. But dudes, are just a it was it was a good fight, man. Really, really entertaining fight, fight of the night for sure. But you know, it just didn't go his way. So you know, it is what it is, right? But uh, that's yeah, the second that, time they tried to put you guys together, a, though. Huh? I said that's the second time they tried to put you guys together. Now, um, they were talking about this before we were talking about this. I, I mean, going back a few months before the Acosta fight, even. Right, but I, I think so. He ain't really want it though. These guys, they talk. These guys, social media guys, they don't really want it. Because I don't decline that the Colin Control hits me with the message. He knows I'm taking it. That's my guy. He's Man, the match there was a there. Well, there's a guy, Ray Rodriguez. He's been coming at you, man. Social media and everything. He was on here a couple weeks ago. He had he had some choice things to say about you. That's a fight he's looking for with you. Um, yeah, one of my, one of my boys. One of my boys told me about him, and then I looked him up. But he he's he's nobody. You understand what I'm saying? He like he's a guy desperate for me. Like you desperate for me. I'm calling Conor McGregor out. Like you know, my, we doing different things. I'm I'm going after head honcho. You going you going after me? But you're acting like. Like, you're somebody. His record is shit. You know what I'm saying? He, do you, you want to fight me? He's looking for life. Do you do you stand by still? I mean, I remember like uh, six weeks ago you had put up on social media. You said you didn't even want to fight nobody unless they were undefeated or doing what you're doing. Yeah, I'm you, trying to fight the guys, man. I'm trying to fight the guys. You know, we can fight. There's millions of fighters out here. I don't care to fight all of them. I got a goal. I'm trying to get somewhere. I want to fight. I want to fight the top guys. Cause I'm trying to make it. I'm trying to be UFC February, March. I'm not trying to be like these guys. These guys have been fighting forever. They have no exposure. They have nobody paying attention to them. That's another thing. My friend told me about the, the Ray guy. I looked him up. You know what I'm saying? I'm a fighter. We look everybody up. You know what I'm saying? I look him up. He don't got no... He's following... He follows more people on his Instagram than are following him. He has no following. You look at my Instagram, I have... 10,700 10, followers. People are paying attention to me. You know what I'm saying? All of the big guys, they're liking my pictures. They're liking my posts. They're reposting my stuff. You know what I'm saying? You got Henzo Gracie every day on. Like, guys like Dwayne Ludwig liking my stuff. Uh, who's the guy that, that fights with Dwayne Ludwig? Uh, TJ Dillashaw. That, that, TJ Dillashaw. These guys, they're all like, these guys are liking my stuff. Conor McGregor's sparring partners. These guys are they're on my page. Like they're paying attention to me. I got big guys paying attention to me. I don't know if you've seen the other day I posted the UFC, they wrote me talking about they're paying attention to me and Yeah, yeah, I did see that, yeah. <laughs> These guys are pay- I got big guys paying attention to me. So to be looking at guys with no exposure and fucked up records and I'm 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 going forward. I'm not trying to go backwards. Like I didn't even get this far. I didn't get this far by making stupid decisions. I'm I'm a guy that's four and oh. I had more exposure when I was one and zero than fighters that had ten fights. You understand? My exposure sure. now is crazy. It's ridiculous. Everybody knows who I am. You can ask anybody who I am. People come train to my gym all over the world. You know what I'm saying? So, so do you have a, a name? Thailand, Sancha. I'm training with the best Muay Thai fighter in the world. This is what I'm at. I'm trying to fight the best fighters in the world because when I beat them, I know that it makes me the best fighter in the world. So I'm going after them. I'm not trying to go after the. This guy lost 
seven fights or whatever. Seven other people beat you out. We know that you can get beat. That's not a problem. You understand? Everybody wants to beat Mayweather because he's never been beaten before. So it makes sense to go after him. You know what I'm saying? So when you talk about the right guy, it makes sense that he comes after me. Because why are you coming after me? You're looking for life. And I'm the guy that's 4-0. Why are you chasing me? If you feel you're so good, why are you chasing a guy that has four fights? You're chasing me because you're looking for life. Because he knows that I got way more exposure. I got more I got, I got, got more people paying attention to me on Facebook. More people paying attention to me on uh, Instagram. I have more views on my YouTube. I'm the guy, right? I'm the guy. At four fights, I'm the guy. I'll be in UFC before I have six fights. I'll be in UFC. So do, who do you have on your – so the next fight's going to have to count. You know what I mean? If you're saying that, that we're getting to the point where the next one's going to have to count. Do you have a name? Do you have somebody that, that you feel is going to be I, that step? I don't have a name, but Colin Contrell, no. That's that's the matchmaker for Legacy. Those are the only people I fight for right now. And I'm going to stick it out to them until the UFC gives me a call. Like, you know, but he's telling me – I told him, you know, don't don't give me no fight unless it makes sense. I'm a top guy. He know I wanted Stephen Peterson. Because Steven Peterson was the guy for yeah. Legacy. He, yeah. was the, he was the top guy. So when you see me call him out, that's why I want him. He's the top guy. When somebody calls somebody out, they're looking for the top guy, usually. Yeah. Oh, so. But being that he lost, he'll probably be back. So maybe I'll get the fight. But is it worth taking the fight? He just lost. Like, you keep losing. I got time to be fighting and lose. I'm a winner, man. I got to beat up the winners to show them who the real winner is. Fair this enough. shit is chess. It's not. Chess. Everybody's, everybody's taking these baby steps. I got, I got, I got, I got friends right now that, I got friends that are ten and up. You know what I'm saying? The UFC didn't call them. Why? The young guys are not strategic. Y'all winning fights, but they're not strategic. This ain't about fighting. Everybody in the world can fight. Who gives a, nobody gives a fuck about that. Who's popular? Who's got the celebrity status? You know what I'm saying? That's that's what Dana White wants to know. That's why McGregor's fighting Mayweather. Not because anybody thinks McGregor could be made. We all know that. McGregor probably knows that. I can't speak for him and say, I know that he knows that. But we know that he knows he's not going to be Mayweather. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Sure. But he's going to talk and make it sound good because he has to do that to sell himself. That's where the game is at right now. So, And I understood these things before even him, even before he got into this. That's just the game. So building celebrity status. People looking at us for entertainment. Sports are just entertainment. That's all it is to people that don't know anything about this. More of the viewers know nothing about MMA than the people that actually participate in MMA. They're just looking for some entertainment. So it's my job to entertain. True. Fuck who's the best fighter, you know? But I am the best fighter, and I'm the most entertaining. I'm just the best at everything, so. So you're, saying, so you're saying UFC by early next year? Easy. Easy. Sweet. Easy. I tell everybody, if I'm not in UFC by June, I'm open in the gym. Hey, listen, they don't man. Because I'm not going to lose. Not going to happen. I'm too smart for these fighters. They're good. You got a lot of talented fighters. They're good. They're not here. I win the fight. I win the fight here. You see David Acosta? I outclassed him. I told him before the fight. In the podcast, I told him. It's going to be 15 minutes of hell. That's what I'm going to give you. Never plan a knockout. Never plan a submission. I don't care about that. I'm Floyd Mayweather. I'm fighting the system. First round, he called me a one punch. Ooh, everybody thought it knocked me out. The punch didn't even feel like nothing. I just happened to be running that way when he hit me, and it caught me off guard. I ain't going to lie. When I went back and looked at the video, and looked back. So, oh, shit. <laughs> that looked like a bad punch. Yeah. <laughs> but realistically, I didn't feel it, though. I didn't, I, it, was, it was no power behind that punch. I was moving that direction. He just caught my momentum, you know, like my feet, like tripped over each other and I fell but you know I, I gained composure won the rest of the round easy sure. everybody knows it. second round I came I beat him the whole second round I was talking to the cameras in the round a, a girl B win she's talking to me I got I could show you the video later on she's talking to me through the cage I'm talking to her we're having I'm having conversation with the girl while I'm fighting him yeah I know she she fights little with things. with Jackson yeah little little things yeah. little things that you don't catch but David Acosta will tell you why he's fighting his heart out. I'm playing. I'm talking to the cameras. I'm talking to Mike Jackson. I'm talking to my other boy in the camera. Like, ask him these questions. Yeah. When he's paying attention, I'm I'm looking outside the ring. I'm having not one word. I'm having full conversations with the people outside of the city. <laughs> yeah, full conversations. You, you gotta ask. You gotta ask him things like this. But 
Yeah, second round dominated him. Third round, I already figured I had the fight beat. I said, let me try something. Let me try to go for a takedown. I wanted to take down. It didn't work on my way. That time, he beat me. He beat me third round on yeah. top of me. Yeah, I yeah. couldn't get out of that mount. That was a good mount. Take nothing away from it. It was good. It was clean. I couldn't do nothing about it. I didn't know to escape, but it won't happen again. Next day, I was training with his coach in my gym. Yeah. That said he didn't even coach him for the fight, but he was coaching me. Is <laughs> <laughs> Listen, man. I want to. Uh, I want to thank you for giving us some time, bro. Enjoy your time in Vegas. I uh, hope to see you back in the cage soon, man. And uh, keep training hard, brother. Absolutely, bro. All right, quit playing with them tigers, too, bro. <laughs> yeah, I'm in Vegas. I'm gonna play with some uh, the, the machines, the casino. Yeah, that's it. All right, best <laughs> of luck, brother. Uh, Later, man. Yo, you know what I love about Delon? He gets a camera in front of him. He's like, yo, I'm he making the most of this. You know, <laughs> yeah. I love that guy. He's a, he's a good dude. Yeah, he knows exactly what he's doing. Yeah, 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 for sure, for sure. Um, I don't know if he, I don't know. Uh, I hope he makes it, man. I like to see anybody make it. You know, I'm not really trying to crack on anyone's journey. Yeah. You know, I hope he I hope he gets what he wants. I think, one, one thing I, was, I don't I, know if he'll make it as soon as he wants to make it, but. One thing I was wondering, I was going to say for you to ask him, but uh, whether or not he would accept a fight on the Contender Series. You know, it seemed like he would. It seemed like he yeah, said, yeah, yeah. "Yeah, you know what I mean." He's pretty much that's pretty much what he was saying. But even right? then, maybe it would be the matchups. Like, who am I facing? You know, he's that kind of guy. He's smart. He's yeah, like, he's, he's not like, stupid guy at all. Yeah, yeah. He, when you grow up in all. when you grow up in New York in like Queens area, yeah. it's just like you're not. No one's gonna get anything past you after a certain amount of time. Yeah, yeah. You were, you know, you lived your life, right? So, yeah. Um, yeah. So you know, we're gonna reach out right now. We got uh, one guest left, uh, Darren Till. We're gonna reach out to him. We're gonna have a talk with him. He's got a fight coming up. Uh, stay with us. We're really looking forward to that conversation. Another undefeated prospect. Stay tuned. Sorry, Fight House fans. We were supposed to be back with Darren Till, but uh, unfortunately, we've been unable to connect with him. Um, we're having a bit of a technical issue, I guess. Um, hopefully, we can have him back next week and uh, we can have the conversation. I was really looking forward to it. But overall, this was a good week. I mean, we started off, we had Grant Dawson, Gavin Tucker, Delaney Perry, three really great guests. Uh, Great fights coming up, and Delaney, you know, he's uh, traveling around doing his thing. Uh, ready to watch that McGregor fight. Yeah, you know, living the good life out in Vegas, getting ready to watch big money fights. So he's talking, about, he's moving in too. Yeah, he was saying, yeah, talking about moving to Vegas. Yeah, can't go wrong with that. You know, uh, he does a lot of traveling anyway, though. He'll be back in Houston doing the Paradigm thing because I know that's his home away from home. So um, overall, it was a really great week. Uh, next week we'll be back. Hopefully, we can uh, we can get Darren back next week. Um, like to get Charles Bird on next week. We're going to try to do all that. So stay with us, and uh, we'll be back next week with uh, a few more great guests. You are Jason Sutcliffe. I am Jason Sutcliffe, and you are Tristan Ketty. Thanks for staying with us, guys. Talk to you soon.